Welcome to our lecture online. Now that we understand the coefficient restitution and how it affects the final velocities for object 1 and object 2, let's do an example. Let's say that we have a small object with m1, mass m1, moving at velocity v1 initial, hitting a second object with mass m2 that has no initial velocity. We also were told that m2 is twice the size of m1. Let's call m1 equal to m and the coefficient of restitution is equal to one-third, and there we have the definition of the coefficient of restitution. This is, of course, the conservation of momentum equation, but based upon all that, can we find the final velocities of the two objects? Now, notice there are two unknowns. It is not an elastic collision, so we can't use the conservation of energy, but we can use the coefficient of restitution equation. So, on the last couple of videos, we learned how to find the final velocity for one of the two objects. And so here, let's use this equation where v1 final is equal to m1 v1 initial plus m2 v2 initial. Uh, that would be, uh, let's see here, would that be plus or minus? Hmm, hmm, hmm. It looks like... That would be minus the coefficient of restitution times, uh, well, I'm missing something here. That would be m2, m2 times the coefficient of restitution times v1 initial minus v2 initial, all divided by m1 plus m2. Now, let me check real quick to see if that makes sense on the signs. I move that across, v1 final, v2 final minus that v2 final and yes I believe that's correct all right so now let's plug in the numbers that we have so v1 final is equal to m1 which is m times v1 initial plus m2 which is 2m times v initial which is 0 minus m2 which is 2m times the coefficient of restitution times v1 initial minus 0, all divided by the sum of the two masses, which is m plus 2m. And of course, we can replace that with 3m. Now notice all the terms have an m in it. One term here, another term there, another term there, and in the denominator, so all the m's can cancel out. That means that v1 final is equal to v1 initial minus 2 times 1 third or 2 thirds v1 initial 2 thirds v1 initial all that divided by 3 all divided by 3 and so what we can say here is that this is equal to v1 initial minus 2 thirds v1 initial that would be 1 third v1 initial all divided by 3, which means that v1 final is equal to 1 ninth v1 initial. So here we have one of the two unknowns. Now, how do we find the second unknown? Well, the second unknown can be found by using the same equation except adaptive of v1 final or v2 final, or we can plug the result in here and use this equation to calculate v2 final. So what I'm going to do here is we're going to use that equation first and then in the next video we'll use the other equation and compare the two and then check to see if we did it correctly. So let's find V2 final here. So V2 final is equal to the left side which is M1 V1 initial plus M2 V2 initial. Then we move this to the other side which means minus M1 V1 final which we found over here all divided by the factor in front, which is m2. Now let's plug in the values here to find v2 final. So that would be m1, which is m, times v1 initial, plus m2, which is 2m, times its initial velocity, which is 0, minus m, times v1 final, which is 1 ninth v1 initial. That should be a 9 here. There, better 9. And all that divided by m2, which is 2m. Again, every term contains an m, so we can get rid of the m, the m, the m, and the m here. And simplified, this is equal to v1 initial 
this drops out minus one ninth v1 initial all divided by two so one minus a ninth that's equal to eight ninths v1 initial divided by two and so therefore v2 final equals half of that which is four ninths v1 initial and there are our two final velocities in terms of their initial velocities v1 final is one ninth v1 initial v2 final is four ninths v1 initial and that is how that's done